actually carried geophysical survey in so many states in the country. Politically, in 1987, that was when we do what you now call the zero party election. The things you use to earn money are there. It's just for you to know how to think of developing them. Representing the people is you being a trophy of dividend or democracy to the people. The people are the beneficiaries. The state now, the environment is quite friendly. The foundation has been laid for uh, even foreign investors, other investors within the Nigerian economy. It's interesting to have you join us once more on your personality program, Delta Scope. My name is Isioma Adigwe. You know, Delta Scope is a weekly magazine program that profiles the good works of some social, economic, and political leaders what will bring to you their achievements, their works, and of course, their contributions to the prosperity of the other states. <music> On today's edition of the Autoscope, our media crew had a conversation with a man with a different but great personality. You know, before joining politics, he worked with a famous company called Hitech. And of course, he contested and won elections under the platform of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, where he represented the good people of a neutral Shimali federal constituency. Then he was appointed special advisor to the governor of Delta State on assembly matters and of course, intergovernment relationship. We are talking about Honorable Pasca Adigwe. Let's meet him and hear what he has for us today. You are a native of Ogugude in Ogwashiko. And of course, you attended St. Michael's College, Ogwashiko. And then you also uh, had a degree in the University of Ibadan, Mathematics and Statistics. You had an MSc at Benin. You also went for a PhD. We would like you to share your experience in childhood and of course that of your schooling. I grew up partially in uh, the urban uh, uh, can call city and also I grew up partially, okay. if I a lot more. Okay in the semi urban or you could say semi rural place. Okay. So I have a combination of these two exposures growing up. Mm. But the one that is um, largely significant was growing up in Ogwashuku. I live or uh, we lived in the epicenter okay. of social and economic activity of Ogwashuku. So a lot of things happened around us, making us known to the larger uh, people of Ogwashuku, mm. and also giving us opportunity to know a lot of people growing up. We had the market in our place, we had the garage, we had the, we are living on the road, main road that you know in Ongwash and up. So no matter what, people always come out there to converge on that area and up. So it gave us exposure how to meet people. And then it gave us early development, okay. early understanding of people, how people live, what people do, the good and the bad uh, exposure mm. we, we saw. Uh, 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 don't mind the one we imbibe, but at least okay. we saw everything. Mm. You know, so I would say it was a rare opportunity. And then it made us smart, it made us knowledgeable, uh, it made us available. 
I made us known. And it all kind of also put us in check because at an early age, we already knew the difference between failures and successes, uh, good and bad. And then we saw the clear departure okay. of good from bad. And we were sport at an early stage to invite good because we also saw the destination of good, <laughs> that it is success. Of course. So we had a strong drive towards success. Okay. I went to school in Awash. I had the opportunity to also get into big secondary schools when we were growing up. I had intelligence. I had the smart level school. I had a good result in school. But family dynamics. Okay. You know, some have to be university first, mm -hmm. pressure here and there. And also, so that I'm going to federal government college. And we're ready and passed to go to. I had to go to a different kind of school. Mm -hmm. Those allowed us to uh, be involved. My heart, father, found to improve. Looking after his children and children of many other of his relatives and you know people. So I went to St. Michael's as well in Ogwashi. Yeah. Uh, but I have it on record. And I like to boast with this. <laughs> yeah? Okay. That I do not have a second in my results from primary one to five and from class one in secondary school to class five. Wow. I didn't come out second. Wow, and that's yeah. That's a whole lot. <laughs> so, I like to go to that. <laughs> Please do, feel free to. So, um, we had a lot of friends. So our house was available for everybody. We were a convergent point mm -hmm. for everybody. So we grew up a happy people. My parents' hands were free and open. They are rather giving to people around than giving to us because they believe that we will always get. So that was the philosophy in the family. Okay. So we developed like that. And then um, we made a lot of friendships. Mm -hmm. We kept in touch with our relatives. And I can count them. You can see I'm accountable to them and I'm accountable for them. Mm -hmm. And there, I went to the university, straight from St. Michael to the University of Ibadan. Okay. At that time, many parents couldn't be that audacious. Oh. Some kept their kids in schools that, they, that are arms length and all, you know. And perhaps, you know, smaller and lesser schools. Okay. But my dad was very audacious. He believed that the University of Ibadan was the best university in Nigeria. Out of them? Yes. Okay. It's not contested. Let's not go there. Even till now, let's not go there. Okay. Because you may not win the argument. <laughs> so, he sent all of us to Ibadi. And then, it was a privilege. A real pri privilege at that. While at Ibadi, we took the fullness of life that we developed to, to Ibadi. Not sooner that we got in there, they didn't know everybody and everybody knew us. We became man of the people. And we participated in everything. Like there's a common parlance here. But um, you went through the school and the school went through you. So everything you think that young people did in school, we did. I did. Everything was balanced out. Yes. I didn't take my eyes off my education. I got him as a scholar of very high repute. Uh, I left the school with a good reputation. I didn't leave with the kind of result I expected. Okay. Yes. Because something remarkable happened. Oh, wow. All along I planned for, I got in, I walked towards studying architecture. Oh. Just not sooner than we began, the go process did. But I get change, school program then, and 
I stepped towards the moon. But let's talk about it. So that was where you resided with mathematics? That was when I was now programmed and switched. Okay. To mathematics and statistics. Because I was clearly the best in math. All from primary one through to, into university. It was an A1 star. So the lecturers felt that this is the best place that I can shine. And as of that time, who born you? To look at the lecturer in the eye and say, what they are saying, I won't do it. They just said, I should make a math. I went to math and statistics. That is very well, but deep down inside, to be honest with you, I didn't feel quite fulfilled. Because I lost a dream of a lifetime as the architecture staff. And if you ask me, that could be part of what was responsible for my not performing 100 over 100. I was exiting the university. If I have my way, I can draw by the hand of the clock. Oh. I would have refused to study that master statistics and continue with architecture till it was another university. <laughs> that was for the rest of it. <laughs> okay. So we went through school, we did our staff. It was a wonderful I was in one of the strongest hall in the Radom, as a man that's Gilway Hall. Okay. Uh, the hall where you have opportunity and you can do anything uh, the student will do. You will be academic, okay. you will also be strong, you will be recognized in school, you will be active in everything. The journalism was at our second call. Oh, wow. We could make union presidents and we can remove presidents. We were involved in everything. But I held the back of anybody who said he was from Delta. That's it, rather. It was a case of don't touch a Delta and do no Delta, no. <laughs> Otherwise, Pascal My own. <laughs> and the people will come after you. So that protection that we gave to our people later on in life, when we came into politics, everywhere we went to, we were paid back. Many, many years after. Wow. You won't see today. Going back to high tech, uh, we know, we also know you worked with a famous company called High Tech uh, before starting up your own business, the new land group of companies. At what point did you, before that, at what point did you get into politics? And okay. what made you get into it? Okay. After my first degree, I went to um, the youth service in Jazz, from the youth service. I was going to start life actually with the University of Jazz as a lecturer okay. uh, to continue and then come to uh, for sure that line, because that's what my father wanted me to tell me to just be a lecturer, become a professor, and then that's that's one that's what he called success. Oh, wow. Yes, be a lecturer, be a book person, and be recognized as an academic. That's what my father called success. <laughs> so, but I'm turning at Biola Riot. We left Jaws. Okay. So I came to the south, to Lagos. Uh, that's when I found a job with a high tech engineer. So I was with them as system analyst. From there, I went to masters, did all kind of program, went overseas, lived overseas in the US and everywhere, and finally came back. But I drove back to Nigeria. I guess he went back to the job in high tech. Mm -hmm. And um, I was driving in Okwashu. One day, one of our cousins, I won down my glass and I greeted him. And he said, Hey, why are you treating me? And I said, oh, Why shouldn't I treat you? He said, Go, you people are driving big cars all over the town. No, I don't have people representing us in government. Oh, wow. I said, well, So, what does that mean? He said, You people have abandoned the town. Whoa. I know the love and how passionate I am. 
Vai bater o baixo aqui. I invited him over and he broke it down for me. And he took me to what is called a ward. Okay. I never knew what he meant. Actually, to be honest with you, I thought he meant W O R L D. World. One. <laughs> world? He said, oh, we got there. I wonder if it was W A R D. World. One. I mean, World Two. And he got me registered. So we started asking questions. You know, where he had the guys want me to come in, what he want me to do and all. And finally we found out that where my niche is, mm -hmm. is representation. Yeah, I'm not so much of an executive person. Okay. Yeah, but I, I, I can, I'm a central tendency. I'm a stand in for people person. You know, right from childhood, I, I led my school for debate and quiz and representation you know, both secondary, both university and all, you know. So I like to be there for people. I like to stand in for people, you know. So I found out that my best niche in politics mm -hmm. will be representative politics, okay. not executive politics. And where I found that was either in the House of Assembly or in the House of Rep. I found out that in the House of Assembly, to be honest with you, my cousin was there. Okay. Yeah, I, the way I'm configured, they are kind of fight I can fight, even till tomorrow. You know, they are kind of engagement I cannot get involved in, even till tomorrow. Uh, everybody has the way God created them. That's true. So I found out that I won't have the God to look in my brother's eye, brother Ivor, and tell him I want to take over his position. He wouldn't go down well with me. So I checked and found out the house of prep was okay. And I checked, hey, what is this all about? I was like representation, working for your people, going to get things for your people. And I found out I had the capacity, I could do it. I had the age, I had the energy, I had the resources, I had the contact. I was living in Abuja, I had done a lot of stuff in Abuja. And all. So I found out I was doable. So I put my uh, uh, hand in the plow and then started traversing there. I, I went around. The consequence, my dad took me around here from 12 noon to uh, 6.30 p.m. and okay. declared that, well, for what inquiries that he has made, that um, I will win the election. I can tell you the places we went to, five places. Yes, we went to uh, uh, late Senator Ibo's house. Okay. From there, we went to Chief Bandi. Then our cuckoo man that lives in Asaba here. Mm. We went to Onya's house in uh, Ward, 4, uh, Ward 4 in Asaba, mm -hmm. uh, Onya. We went to Yokba, uh, I forgot his name now, Yokba Inokwe. Okay. Uh, it's a Yokba in, in Asaba. In, yes, Inokwe, okay. you know, father, mm -hmm. Inokwe. We went to the uh, Woko place in uh, Unsokwa. Okay. In Unsokwa, right? We went to the, the last place, Jibuno. Jibuno? Yes, in on the Cholona. Okay. And we saw him. After my dad discussed with them, told him that Lord Michael, your son, go and sleep. That's how we engaged. And uh, the rest is all to see. In 2003, yes. you contested and won yes. an election into the Federal House of Assembly to represent the good people of Banyo Tushimi yes. people. You know, and of course, you have been involved in the proposition of motions and of course several bills in the house. Are there any particular one you would like of interest you would like to share with us? The one that um, resonated most with me and unfortunately it is still not where I expect it to be. It will be the turnaround of the fortunes of Nigerian police okay. and policing. And I'll tell you why. But before then, as this aspiration was being weaved together, my dad asked me, what are the specific things you tend to achieve when you get to this phase? So that I don't bring disgrace to this family. And I told my dad three things. One, 
I told him that I'll go and shuffle my town. See some altitude of 475 meters above sea level. Being the second highest position in the whole of if it's not taking Delta North. And that if you bring a dam there, mm. it means that the cost of production of water is the only thing you will bear. The cost of distributing the water will be zero. Mm. And you know what water means. And to the glory of God, I got to National Assembly and I was able to achieve that now in Mombasa. Just that Nigeria is very what it is. We have done the dam. Mm -hmm. Now to put water recirculation, mm -hmm. water supply that can be now distribute water to where it will be consumed. Eh? Mm -hmm. It's where we are stuck to today. Unfortunately. Number two, I used to come to I was a young person. Okay. I used to drive to Abuja. I can even come at Asaba in the morning and go back in the evening from Abuja. But I found out that our people were paying heavily going to Abuja, traveling to Abuja. Okay. Secondly, I studied Lagos and the cities around Lagos and how their development evolved. I studied Shagamu. I found out that everything about Shagamu was from Lagos. Ibadan, Abiyokuta, Ijebode, Badagre, they were all feeding off Lagos. Why? Nearness to source of raw material, economics, if you remember. <laughs> that this one now is nearness to source of raw material plus nearness to source of power. And I said that we have to find a way to make our area nearer to Abuja and faster to Abuja. This one gave birth to this Ela, Ebu, Otto Bridge, Ilushi. Mm -hmm. that, that was my baby. That's how I brought that road and that bridge, that auto bridge. With Minister Ogun Lewede, uh, Minister of Works then. And that bridge was constructed. But you know, most of this project, the administration is usually more than four years. Okay. So when I left, the remaining road that is to be done expanded to fold into the bridge. And also the one at the back of the bridge to get to Ilushi. Instead of going left to um, Iwohimi. You take a ride that will lead you to again in Bode and the rest of them. Mm. That would have cut our travel time to Abuja by half. Guess what? <laughs> what? The people there. The third one, which I will say yes, is also success. You can see how 50% success, 50% success. Exactly. Just for it, for the second part of it to be done, mm. and we, the dream will be complete. Um, they used to address us here as non-oil producing area, non-oil producing area. <laughs> so when they started ADBC, we were not considered, we were not involved. I said, no, that this will not happen. And I went to war. I, went, I practically went to war in the National Assembly. Then this our brother, Senator Emmanuel Aguari Awodo, who is a, an advisor to Kaua now, yes. was the MD of NDBC. I went to Obi of Agoku. We got to, to, to Port Harcourt and I broke through into their offices, forced them to force an ultra family into the budgets of NDDC. 2005. From then till now, there is no budget that is considered for NDDC that an ultra family is not included. Okay. Go and find out. But how much do they now put for our people? The same fifty percent achievement. Follow up, so we have issues. Our people that came behind us, they tried their best. Most of them had other things that they had to do. Okay. So I'm not saying that they didn't do well. Mm. But what I'm saying is that in this particular area, eh, they put their energies in a lot of other areas, and then. They should have also put more energy in this area exactly. so that it can become a hundred percent story. Mm. Yeah. So these were the key things I can tell you that were my focus in the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. And they were all achieved. Mm -hmm.